So what I'll do is I'll show some of the I'll show examples of both creating a Windows VM and also creating a Linux VM. Now, first of all, why am I asking that question? I'm asking that question because today's conversation that we are going to have and the implementations that we are going to look at would be creation of virtual machines. So if you look at the compute options or a compute so uh, like I mentioned on day one, once we look at any of these resources, once it comes to the cloud platform, you have three primary entities here, compute, storage, networking. So we began with the foundational aspect of Active Directory, identity, how do we get inside the system? Then we started discussing about networking, laying the core infrastructure or the core foundational aspects, right? Making provisions for a private, uh, making resources for network, uh, making resources for private IP address, public IP address, network security group, right? I showed these resources in a previous session. If I'm not mistaken, I also showed you how do you connect all these components together to a virtual machine. Am I correct with that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So moving further from there, I discussed about creation of VM. How do you, what will be the naming conventions over here? And I think this is where I stopped. Right? Public internet connectivity, network security group, how all, all these components connect together into a virtual machine. And moving further, let's go to the location location of the virtual machine if you look at location of the virtual machine here what we can do is we can check for where is the maximum number of customer requests coming from like we were discussing about there are large number of data centers across the globe where where do you have your customers customers coming from so all these customer locations that we have you can connect them to the nearest location right how will that help the customer they can get their services with minimum latency right faster the service faster the access to the resources happier the customers are right so how large number of processing power that you have or enormous compute that you have it doesn't matter if there is a response latency so we will have to speed up minimize the latency and give these resources to the user as quickly as possible. Now, how do I determine what would be the size of virtual machine? Now, this is a very, very important question. And if you see the parameters over here, depending upon your workload that you are using, depending upon the options that we have over here, this will help us to find out what would be the right size for our VM. Now generally, when we begin with, we'll have to look at what are the on-premises resources and how much is the consumption over there, right? Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying create an exact machine with same configuration on Azure environment. You'll have, because within on-premises environment, people may have done additional provisioning. Within on-premises environment, people create resources for next five years, 10 years as well, because they are looking from a long-term perspective. They're looking from a long-term perspective. Whereas, uh, once it comes to cloud, cloud basically is for immediate usage, right? And again, if you look at the provisioning from on-premises environment, it will take weeks or even it, it will take months to get approvals from different departments, approvals from different stakeholders. Whereas, if you go to the public cloud platform, there is option of immediate provisioning. Yes, you may get uh, some of the other approvals here, but again, the kind of investment that we are doing and the kind of time it will take for creation of resources is pretty quick. So, there's no such issues once it comes to public cloud platforms. 
if you look at your vm size option first thing which i have noticed is i will always prefer to begin with general purpose where i don't have too much of clarity of the underlying environment what type of resource to create whether the workload is memory intensive storage intensive now there will be organizations or customers where the networking team the admin team uh, stakeholders they will be aware about details details in terms of whether this application is compute centric memory centric they may have captured diagnostics and logs for it they can guide you for it or if they are using special type of application like autocad and all those things right so you can uh, graphic based applications so they may have this information but many a times where they don't have clarity that what type of applications we have whether it is memory centric memory intensive or uh, high performance compute required you can start with general purpose and based on your observations based on your monitoring on cloud you can move to any one of these options so as far as azure is concerned let me go to documentation and within documentation let me go to virtual machine i think that should help you to understand the kind of options and the kind of models which are available series which is available this is a very very important section so on this link if you look at the options available right so what kind of machines that you have and what are respective sizes for that machine right so balanced cpu to memory ratio very very ideal for dev test scenarios compute optimized f series machines right if you look at memory optimized machines e series machines m series machines so if you're looking at big data solutions no sql databases lsv2 n series machines are gpu enabled machines right so depending upon what is your customer requirement what is the kind of environment that you want to build over here you can se select a specific type of machine apart from this while you are trading your machine there is generation 1 machine and there are generation 2 machines as well so generation 2 machines will give you much better performance quick boot time right so if you can look at the options available here your support for scsi disks your os disk can go beyond 2 tb which is one of the most important aspects of generation 2 machines right so you can check for resources over here now many a times people ask me a question that uh, the cloud vendor hides lot of details they don't tell us what is the kind of machines that they are trading behind the scene which is not true so if you go to your documentation here you will be able to see each of these machine types what is the underlying details i'm not sure how much helpful will it uh, will it be for you because anyways we are working on a virtual machine on top of these physical machines but still people would want to do what is a kind of processor or what is a kind of environment behind the scene you can find all this information over here for each and every machine type okay what are the options available in terms of cpu memory what is the minimum option minimum resources available and what is the maximum resources available within each of these sizes
Does this make sense for you all? Yes, much. Okay. Let's move ahead. So depending upon your requirements captured, You can go for specific type of machines over here. Now, how many machines do you require? It's up to you. Now, when you're moving, when you are moving from one family of machines to another family of machines, though we uh, okay. Now, there are two ways of doing scale up. So, one way of doing scale up is you are within the same family, say A series. So, you move from uh, A uh, A1 machine to A2 machine to A3 machine like that. That is also called a scale up. Now, even in that scenario, there will be a limitation to it. Say, for example, I don't have machines beyond A5. So that family is finishing over there. So now you have to go to B series or G series or N series. Now, in that one option is you can move up in that family or in that series, or you change the series of that system. When you change a series, there will always be a downtime. And even uh, there will be a downtime in sense you'll have to create a new machine detach the disks from the previous machine and attach the disk to the new machine so there are options of scale up just give me a moment because this is a very very important discussion and i want to capture all the nuances of it so if you look at Scalability options. There are two options over here. One is scale up and second is scale out. Right. As far as scale up is concerned, here what we are doing is we are increasing the CPU, we are increasing the RAM, we are adding uh, additional storage over here. Right. So this is what you'll mean by scale up. Within scale up, we can scale up in the same family same family of vms or you might want to change the family right in both these scenarios what you are doing what microsoft is doing behind the scene is they are taking up a newer machine right so once it comes to change in the same family this is much faster Whereas changing the VM family, this will involve higher downtime. This will involve higher downtime and this will require creation of new machine, attaching and detaching of disks to that new machine. Okay, does it make sense to everyone? Whereas once it comes to scale out, here what we do is we increase number of machines. Right. And here what we can do is we can associate a load balancer. We can associate uh, auto scale facilities over here, which will help you to work with your existing environment and deal with more number of requests which are coming. Okay. So is this clear to everyone? So when you talk about cloud environment and we talk about elasticity, this is what is the significance or meaning of elasticity. Or in, if I put it in other words, how do I implement elasticity? Implementation of elasticity will be by using resources like auto scale. As far as scale up is concerned, scale up is something which is vertical in nature. Whereas once you're doing scale out, this is horizontal in nature. Okay, so these are the options or the steps that people do to make this environment elastic in nature. And this can grow as much as you want because you have large number of resources available on public cloud as compared to private cloud. So this is what I showed you on the documentation. 
what is the type of machines within each of these categories so depending upon what is the kind of requirements that you have gathered now a very important thing that you will see here is there are large number of resources but it is our responsibility as a architect how much of requirements we have gathered correct and more and more details you have got into in terms of requirement gathering it will be easier for you to do the mapping if you look at the cost over here when it comes to pricing model uh, though it talks about compute cost storage cost there are actually number of factors that will be involved when you are doing a pricing for a virtual machine okay they have mentioned four uh, the slide mentions four options over here or four details i don't think it covers all the aspects the best way to check for this would be going to a tool given by microsoft which is pricing calculator and using pricing calculator we should be able to understand what are the factors which determine the cost of machine and how the values will change depending upon the selections being made okay so just give me a moment here i have my virtual machine let me go ahead and understand the factors of vm pricing the first factor that you'll see over here which will impact the pricing of virtual machines will be the location or the region where you are creating the machine so different region for same machine will have different pricing can you see this west us west us 2 east us uae so depending upon what are that location charges right every region will have a different set of pricing can you see that so some locations same resources cheaper other locations it would be costlier so cost will vary based on the region or location where you create that member that's one second is what is the underlying operating system that you are using that will also define the pricing of your resources right so first is region second is os whether you are going for windows environment whether you are going for linux environment as part of linux something which is not mentioned over here so if you have something like linux ubuntu right the pricing is low but if you go for specific licensed implementation even that will be a separate cost so what is the distribution that you are going for in terms of linux that will be a that will change the price in case of windows environment if you are going for just plain operating system or you are going for a specific workload so what is the workload or the server that you are using over here right there will be a cost involved for that as far as tier is concerned i recently i have not seen anybody going for basic tier everybody is going for standard tier because people would want high availability people would want scalability which is not available in basic tier right so i am not getting into that factor if you look at category of machines let me go to general purpose machines what is the instance size that you would want right so your vm size will be an important factor over here 
or your pricing. Next is number of instances. So what is the size that you want? How many number of machines do you want? Five machines, 10 machines, two machines. Along with this, <clears throat> depending upon the OS that you have taken, license of the operating system, whatever workload that you have taken, license for that, that will be a primary factor for pricing. Now, since we are looking at pay as you go model, this will be an important factor for pricing over here. So depending upon the time that you use, the time for which you use this machine, that will define the pricing of your virtual machine. Now here if you see, once it comes to number of virtual machines and how many machines you are what are the timelines for which you are using that machine? That will define the pricing. Let me select a D2 machine. Now while I am selecting this machine, here you see for compute, there are two options available. One is pay as you go model. And the second option that you see over here is reserved instances. Okay, so from VM usage perspective, you have pay as you go model and you have reserved instances. Now, one common question that people have is when you when do I use these reserved instances or what will be the scenario for it? As far as and I'll share my experience on this. Once it comes to pay as you go model, pay as you go model basically is for depth test machines where we have multiple developers and all these developers are building a POC, building a environment, right? And all their deployments are being done on respective virtual machines. So in terms of pay as you go model, you can go for depth test machines. So can you tell me how will be the pricing over here? It will be number of developers multiplied by are said they work. Am I correct with this? Number of developers multiplied by number of hours they work and multiplied by number of VMs that you have. Okay. So that is how you will come to the cost over here. So if I take a D2 machine, two core, seven GB RAM machine, so all the development developer software is being installed over here. I have 10 people who are working. Will they work for 730 hours in a month? They will not, right? So each developer will work. So I have 10 developers. 10 developers will work 8 hours a day. Right? Let me take 9 hours. 9 hours a day. multiplied by number of weeks, which is uh, four. Number of days per week, which is five days. Okay, so how much is this value? 10 developers. Let me remove VMs from here. Because for a developer, I'll have one VM. I am taking from that perspective. So nine hours a day. This will come come somewhere around 180 hours. Am I correct with that? You can do your maths. Now this, on a maximum level, could come would come to 200 hours. 200 hours in a month. 
so 10 virtual machines one per developer and 200 hours so if you're using something like windows virtual desktop even you can create a pool of machines over here and uh, from that pool of 10 machines maybe around 12 people or 15 people can use that same machines in uh, different time zones right 200 hours they are using this machine so that's how you calculate the pay as you go model okay let me go ahead and complete this scenario now for each of these users i will attach one disk per machine so 10 disks this will be the cost of the disk that we have now whenever you are using dev test environment you can make use of a pricing over here which is dev test pricing can you see the pricing here this is 575 dollars per month i can apply a dev test pricing if i apply a dev test pricing can you see the price now so here what microsoft is saying is if you are using this machines for dev test machines you may not need real time implementation some kind of uh, downtime is okay some some type some amount of downtime is okay with these kind of machines these are not production sensitive or uh, user facing machines so some latency is okay with these kind of machines right and that's why we have chosen dev test pricing over here so this is one way how do you calculate a cost so this was one way of uh, calculation now let me show you the next resource over here which is reserved instances when will i go for reserved instances in case of production scenarios where i cannot afford to have a downtime in those scenarios i will go for staging scenarios or production scenarios this is where i'll go for reserved instances because these machines will not stop they have to continuous run right so once i have decided what type of machine i need i will do auto scaling say for example i need minimum of two machines say i need a four core machine right and i will require say two machines now these two machines will run for how many hours 730 hours per month am i correct two machines three machines whichever number of machines you require so i'm saying minimum of two machines i require which will run for 730 hours now if you are sure that they are supposed to run for 730 hours why don't you go for a reserved instance which means i will at least own these machines for next one year are you getting it the moment you select reserved instance that option of hours is being removed now second thing okay let me remove dev test pricing so you see the actual cost here so if you go for pay as you go model for d3 machine it will take 817 dollars per month but if i go for a one year one year reserved instance it reduces to 506 dollars I don't recommend three year reserved instance for my customers because the way how technology is changing three years will be a pretty uh, pretty uh, longer commitment which I don't want to do right now because of how the hardware technology is changing how the softwares are changing number of options that I get for re-architecting but I would still safely go for one year reserved instance with 47 percent discount secondly when people are doing dev test implementation they might want to go for trial licenses okay when people are when organizations are working with dev test subscription they want to go for trial licenses because my project will end in 3 months to 4 months so i can take a chance there 
but once it comes to production scenarios people would prefer not to take a chance in those cases they will go for a license right so i can purchase when i know that for next one year i have to use this environment i can go for enterprise agreement with microsoft and i can purchase some of these licenses here so if i have a hybrid license uh, sorry if i already have a license i can make use of azure hybrid benefit where under software assurance i can move my license to azure and if you see since i am using this license i have mig migrated the license from my on premises environment to azure environment the cost will drop so one year reserved instance and using azure hybrid benefit and i am talking about windows os huh? if i go for sql server and if i have a license of sql server you can see drastic change in terms of pricing right i will see drastic change of pricing because now i am getting rid of two licenses over here so once it comes to production scenarios you can leverage on both these aspects one is reserved instances and second is hybrid benefit let me move further number of disks which i will require will be two disks of higher capacity depending upon number of machines which i have here don't apply dev test pricing so this will be the cost of your machines per month okay so does it make sense so reserved instances depending upon what kind of environment you are creating production environment staging environment next thing which i mentioned over here was license mobility right license mobility and what i mentioned over here don't forget is this should have software assurance and it is also part of enterprise agreement this is also part of enterprise agreement with microsoft so this is how you can save on cost and you decide what kind of machines you want to create over here did i miss out anything here i mentioned about dev test pricing and i'm not sure if i discussed management groups i'll come to that part a bit later how you can manage number of subscriptions within your environment 